Hello, my name is David Asa Portillo, uh, and in this video project, I'm going to be discussing uh, about the martyr Polycarp, uh, his life and his martyrdom. Uh, in this video project, I want to address a few things about Polycarp, uh, and I want us to try and answer some questions. Uh, I want us to try and discover who the man is and what he's done. Uh, answer questions like, did he have a mentor? Who was he? Uh, what was the cost of his martyrdom? Uh, and lastly, I want us to challenge ourselves uh, and ask ourselves, what can we take away from Polycarp's example? Uh, before we begin, uh, and before we can get any deeper into Polycarp's martyrdom, uh, we first need to know who the man was. Uh, so to start off, we find that Polycarp was born in 69 AD. Uh, now, although we do not know we're not too sure where he was from originally, uh, but we do know that he is of Greek descent. He is a Greek. Uh, <clears throat> uh, he was known as the Bishop of Smyrna, uh, which would take place and place him in modern day Turkey today. Uh, tradition has it that he was uh, a personally, uh, he was personally discipled by the Apostle John. Uh, and that was, um, that, and, and that was the person that appointed him as the Bishop of Smyrna, uh, and it was by John again. Uh, the Christian community in Smyrna uh, was one of the seven churches in, of Asia mentioned in, uh, in the book of Revelation by the Apostle John again. Uh, the second letter is addressed to the angel of the church in Smyrna. Now, uh, one can't help <laughs> but wonder if this angel uh, was referencing to John's uh, John's student uh, and disciple Polycarp. Uh, now, Polycarp, whose name uh, in Greek actually means much fruit, had reportedly been uh, been John's uh, disciple in Ephesus along with Ignatius and Papaitis. Uh, he and Ignatius remained close friends. Uh, Ignatius' letters to him uh, would seem to indicate that he was not only Polycarp's friend, uh, but he was also his mentor after John died. Uh, Ignatius's letter to uh, the people of Smyrna uh, was was of one the character of an elder bishop uh, trying to shore up support for the younger ones. So you can see that there was a relationship between the two. Uh, it appears that Polycarp was already the bishop of Smyrna uh, at a young age. Uh, now, exactly what age scholars haven't pinpointed it. But uh, perhaps even in the time of John, uh, while John was writing the Revelation, Polycarp is recorded uh, as saying on the day of his death, 80 and six years I have served him, meaning Christ, uh, and he has done me no wrong. This can indicate either that he was 86 years old or that he lived 86 years after his conversion. Uh, either way, we can safely assume that Polycarp had been a follower of Jesus for a very long time, all the way up to his time of death. Uh, again, as tradition would have it, uh, Polycarp was led to Christ by his, uh, by his elder John, uh, who was one of the original disciples that followed Jesus when he was on earth. It is said that when he was put uh, when he was put in the place of being Bishop of Smyrna, John uh, was not the only one in attendance, but the other disciples that followed Jesus during his time on earth uh, were the ones to establish him in that position. Uh, going back to it, he was martyred at the age of 86, <clears throat> uh, around the middle of the second century. So we're looking about uh, 155 to 160 AD. Uh, having survived by his mentor for f by 40 years, okay, by 40 years, and served as bishop for perhaps as 60 years or more, um, it, it's quite some time that, that Polycarp has been on earth uh, and, and doing what he is called to do. Now, uh, what was the cost of his martyrdom? Before Polycarp's arrest, he actually went to Rome uh, on a different assignment. Uh, according to uh, Another scholar, uh, Polycarp visited Rome to discuss, to discuss differences in the practices of the churches of Asia, where he was at, and Rome, uh, that was the rising church coming. 
uh, scholars state that on certain things, the two uh, speedily came to the understanding while, um, as it was observed of Easter. Uh, so the whole conversation was based on Easter. Uh, each adhered to his own custom uh, without breaking off the full communion of, of the other. Uh, Polycarp followed the Eastern practice of celebrating the feast uh, and, and, and it dates back to the 14th of uh, Nisan, uh, the day of the Jewish Passover. Regardless uh, of the day of the week that it landed on, uh, that was the day. Now, uh, on the other side, uh, Atinus uh, or Anistus <laughs> uh, followed the Western practice of the celebration, the feast on the first Sunday after uh, following the first full moon after the spring equinox. Okay, uh, so now uh, Anista uh, allowed Polycarp to celebrate the Eucharist um, in his own church, which was regarded by the Romans as a great honor. So uh, Polycarp already had favor uh, with the church in uh, Rome. Now, however, during this time, the people of Rome were calling for Polycarp uh, to be killed uh, for being a follower of Christ. Uh, it is not clear exactly why he was suddenly at the age of 86. Uh, and I really want to try and drive that in at the age of 86 years old, uh, subject to arrest. Uh, but when he but when he heard Roman officials uh, were going to arrest him, he decided to wait for them at home. Uh, he, did, he, he decided to wait at home. Some friends and followers uh, pleaded to him to run away and hide. Uh, he finally agreed to withdraw to a small estate outside of the town. Um, but while in prayer at that time, he received some sort of vision, um, as he puts it. However, uh, however, he saw or heard, we do not know. Uh, he simply reported to his friends that he now understood and I quote, I must be burned alive. It's kind of, it's kind of crazy, but we see that uh, Polycarp was already establishing where and how he would uh, come to face martyrdom. Uh, Roman soldiers eventually discovered Polycarp's uh, whereabouts and came to his door. When his friends urged him to run, Polycarp replied like this, uh, God's will be done. And he let the soldiers in and he fed them uh, before they went off uh, to, to, to the protocol. Uh, he was escorted to the local uh, proconsul, uh, Aquarius, um, Aquar Aquartus, excuse me, uh, who interrogated him in front of a crowd of curious ongoers. Uh, Polycarp seemed unfazed by the interrogation. Uh, he carried a dialogue with him. Uh, all the way up until he lost his temper and threatened Polycarp by telling him that he would have that, that he thrown uh, he would be thrown to the wild beast he would be burned at the stakes and so on. Polycarp just told Aquarius that while the but, but, that, that while the Procarp's fire lasts but a little while the fires of judgment cannot be quenched. Uh, and Polycarp concluded by saying this, but why do you delay? Come, do what you will. Uh, in showing that Polycarp's fervor and uh, I believe even personality of who he is uh, in the face of something uh, this tremendous. Um, Polycarp telling him, just do it. If you're going to do it, do it. Uh, some soldiers then grabbed him and wanted to nail him to the stake that he was going to be burned at. But Polycarp stopped them uh, and telling them, leave me as I am. Uh, for he, we're talking about God again, who grants me to endure the fire will enable me also to remain on the prior, uh, on, on the pyre, uh, unmoved, without the security you desire from nails. He prayed out loud uh, and the fire was lit. And his flesh was consumed. Now, uh, there are many different things that have gone on here. And uh, different scholars have reported and have said um, that although the fire went up, uh, he was not burnt. Uh, and, and, and it just became uh, 
this this spectacle of of this martyrdom and saying that not that, that it did not smell uh, like burning flesh, but as uh, bread baking, um, or even the color of what he looked like, uh, looking like gold uh, refined. Uh, eventually, they had to have a, a soldier stab him, uh, and what came out of him was gushes of blood to quench the fire. Uh, even some speculate and say that even a dove flew from him, um, which is quite phenomenal. It's it's quite interesting. Now, the martyrdom of Polycarp is indeed important, but often is not everyone's top martyr story. Uh, for me, something that I would encourage us to take away is this. Uh, I enjoy the account that is given when Polycarp is being taken into the arena and and, and scholars say and, and, and witnesses uh, claim that a voice came from heaven to Polycarp and said, be strong, Polycarp, play the man. Uh, no one saw who had spoken, but the believers that were there around there heard the voice. Because of this, I am challenged and I want to challenge us uh, to be challenged by this man's life and death. Uh, Polycarp, even at his old age, was faithful to Christ. And in the face of death, continued forward to receive his crown that I know is waiting for him. Thank you so much.